and a very good morning to you. Thanks for being with us. How are you? Are you reeling from what's going on in number 10 and around of Westminster? I mean, where do we start, Anne? Right, morning, Richard. No, I'm not reeling, and I think we need to keep clear heads about this. Um, first of all, when Boris said he thought it was a work event, my immediate reaction was that it was so stupid. Um, but then when I considered it further, I thought these are people who've been working together all day. They've been doing that for months on end. Um, and they decided to meet this time, not with a file in their hand, but with a glass in their hands, uh, to say goodbye to a colleague or whatever it might be. Um, Boris was asked to come out and thank people. Uh, and I don't suppose for one moment that they put that in quite the same category as organising a due for Sunday lunch or something. Um, nevertheless, nevertheless, that much said, um, I think somebody there should have thought about it. And this is what is really lacking. Boris doesn't appear to have anybody behind the scenes thinking for him, saying, hang on, Prime Minister, how might that appear? Um, he hasn't got that. He's disorganised, he's dishevelled, he's diseverything. Yeah, and it's just time that he had somebody uh, taking charge behind the scenes. And that ain't Harry. And, and I, I, I get that point. People are working very hard and they just want to sort of just relax for a bit. I think everybody gets that. It was the fact that there was a an email with an invitation to a socially distant sort of do, uh, I think it was a Friday, uh, bring your own booze. It was clearly a, a an organised event. But, and then you've got issues of, of sort of by bringing in a fridge. It just feels a culture, Anne, of one rule for them and a different rule for, for everyone. And the thing that gets me is the insensitivity they obviously weren't afraid of the virus and yet they were telling all of us that uh, we we couldn't say goodbye to our loved ones who were dying we couldn't go to their funerals that i think is what's winding the public up oh certainly what winds me up is the fact that they were making judgments which i think were actually perfectly sound judgments that they weren't if you look at the pictures of that party in the garden there was miles between uh, the different groups uh, and uh, i think um they made judgments and I don't necessarily disagree with those judgments, but the issue is what you've just pointed out, which is that we weren't allowed to make those judgments. I mean, I tried as far as I could to make my own judgments throughout all uh, the whole process. Um, and if only they'd allowed the public, advise them strongly what to do, but then allowed the public to make its own best judgment, um, then we wouldn't have the problem we've got now. However, onto the bigger issue, should he resign? No. <clears throat> this is the worst possible moment. Now, there's never a good moment to resign. But we're in a situation where we're coming out of a pandemic, a completely unforeseen pandemic. We've had the impact on the economy of that. Um, we've got uh, numerous problems with Brexit. And I would say to you, Richard, beware. I heard you calling for Boris's resignation. You might get a Remainer in <laughs> instead. So beware. Um, and uh, we've got Brexit uh, to sort out. Um, and those two things alone, uh, before everything else, mean that this is not time to plunge the country. I'm not thinking of the party now, I'm thinking of the country. The country into uh, months of uncertainty, which is what a leadership election involves. Uh, How no... will the EU negotiate over Northern Ireland if they don't know who the PM is going to be? How will the civil servants implement long-term policy if they don't know who the PM is going to be? Just let's stay calm, shall we? Uh, do, but do you see, given where the polls are, Anne, do you see that if he survives until the May elections, and obviously, in a sense, the Tory leadership campaign, if there was one, is is many weeks long. It's, it's sort of 10 to 12 weeks on a, on a normal yeah. time frame, as I understand. If, he, if, if the Tories do very badly in that May election, do you see then that people might say, actually, now it's time? Because ultimately, uh, the Tory party is a, it's an election winning machine. And if they think that he's not going to win the next election, then then they won't hang around, will they? I think the May elections will be important. What is not important are the opinion polls now. Um, uh, you know, I could point to a time in, say, 2013, when Labour was with its strongest lead for years and years. And what happened two years later? They lost the election. You know, and, and so when you actually try to take a long-term perspective, what the opinion polls show now is not necessarily what they're going to show in three years' time. But in May, of course, you have the elections. And what you end up with, if you have an absolute slaughter, as, as Theresa May found out, if you have a slaughter at the polls in May, people are very, very angry because it is, and it's something that I've observed for years, the troops in the country think they're at action stations, they're fighting, and the officers 
brawling in the mess. You know, and that is what infuriates them. And I think, therefore, you might get a very bad reaction uh, if the polls go against us in May. But there's a lot of time between now and May. Oh, there, and there, is, so there is without question, and you're quite right, there's, in a sense, there's always going to be things to sort out with Brexit because, actually, trade between two entities, two countries, it, it, it's always subject to future reviews and negotiations. And, you know, let's see where Liz Truss gets to with it. She's... She's written and talked tough. The question is whether she actually acts tough in the ah, negotiations yeah, uh, yeah. O- over the next few weeks. She, I would like to see her and set a clear deadline to these negotiations rather than drip, drip, drip. I mean, Lord Frost tried, but perhaps he resigned because he wasn't happy that Boris would take the big, tough decision to invoke Article 16. Well, he resigned on many grounds, not least high tax and high spend. Uh, but... Um, you're absolutely right. What we lack is the deadline. We hear a lot of bold talk, but we don't actually have deadlines. We've heard bold talk for a long time before Liz Truss was in charge of the EU. We're always hearing bold talk. So we need a deadline. Uh, and Liz Truss needs to say that if by, and I pluck it out of the air, the 31st of March, I just pluck that out of the air, uh, there is no progress or no nothing that we would recognise as progress then, Article 16. But without a deadline and just a vague threat in the air, yes. why would the EU believe us? When do they ever believe us? Well, because we've, in a sense, we've never uh, it, acted tough enough. We've never really given an indication that we would walk away. I think actually uh, Lord Frost was possibly the only person that they thought might genuinely uh, be prepared to walk away. And now, sadly, he's walked away, as you say, on many grounds. I think that's, that's absolutely true. I think he might have done on the other hand, Liz Truss has got quite a lot of steel in her. I mean, she's come out this week supporting the PM, which is an unpopular position to take within the party. Rishi Shunak just ran for cover. Uh, Liz Truss actually stood up and stood behind her general. Uh, and I rather admire that. So she may, she may have the guts to do this. But I don't see any sign at the moment that the EU uh, believes that we will take unilateral action. And that goes right back, as you and I know, to the days of you know, should we have no deal? Of course, we should have had no deal. And all this would have been sorted out by them. Uh, that's right. Whilst you've been speaking, Anne, uh, just thinking about Boris, we've got a, a tweet message coming. It says, uh, Remainers within the Conservatives want for Boris Johnson as a party member, says, I would support Boris as long as he reversed his green taxes and national insurance increases uh, and sorted out the uh, the Northern Ireland border and illegal crossings. It's quite a long list there. Uh, the, <laughs> I mean, it, it is a long list of of issues, but Boris has got to show some real courage. I agree, but it's because of those issues that are floating around at the moment, particularly the Northern Irish one, that I think this is not a time to plunge the country into, you know, 12 weeks or possibly even more richer of uncertainty. It really isn't. And, um, and... But, but I think he's right. I mean, he's picked on the right issues. Green taxes. We did not vote when we contribute in this country 1% to all the world's emissions, one miserable percent. And yet we're absolutely putting an enormous burden on individual citizens to change their boilers and to do this and to get a certain type of car. 1%. It's like throwing a sugar cube into Loch Ness and saying, oh, look, well, I've sweet the you're, water. You're absolutely right. Well, when I was pounding the streets of Bexley and Sidcup, Anne, I can tell you that the simple slogan, save our boiler, went down very well indeed. Before I let you go, Anne, um, could I please just get your thoughts on the Barry Gardner revelations and Christine Lee and the implications for this? And and should Barry Gardner essentially stand down pending this inquiry? I'm quite sure if it was a Conservative MP that uh, had received that sort of level of funding, the Labour Party would be uh, would be calling for uh, for a suspension at the very least. Well, I think a, a lot depends on what declarations have already been made about that funding, where it was perceived to have come from, etc. I think, and I have always said this, I am a great believer in the principle, whether it's Tory, Labour, it doesn't matter who it is. I'm a great believer in the principle, innocent until proved guilty. Um, but if he is proved to have taken something from questionable sources, knowing that they were questionable, then there's, there's that. Um, then, of course, he should, he should more than he should, of course, he should stand up, he should resign. Yeah. In, in yeah. a sense, in that a sense, a yes. And, and of course, actually, as I understand from everything that's been written, you know, he's declared these donations yeah. uh, over over a long period of time. And therefore, in a sense, everybody, everybody knew. knew. Uh, everybody knew. Yeah. Uh, and therefore, as you say, the key question is uh, the, uh, the 
in a sense, what was the source of the donations and uh, the person behind it and where the money came from behind it? Uh, that is the, the issue. The, the greater issue is the Chinese trying this sort of thing on at all. I mean, I think we all know, you know, since in the days of, uh, of the Cold War, we all know that um, big foreign powers uh, who are ambitious uh, uh, will go in for this sort of thing. But this seems to have gone on for a very long time. Well, it's I... been amazingly blatant. Well, it, in, in my Sunday sermon that I give, uh, and as you know, I'm not a person of the cloth, Anne, but my, my monologue I call a Sunday sermon first thing. I've called for a full inquiry into uh, Chinese funding of, of large parts of the British establishment because I am actually really concerned about it. It just seems to have so many reaches. And in a sense, it's that simple slogan, it's either made in China or controlled by China. And I'm worried that large parts of our establishment have got themselves into hot water. Oh, I think that's quite true. And don't forget while we're at it that Russia controls our gas. So, uh, you know, we, we, we have those problems. Uh, and again, I don't think that Boris has got the eye for detail uh, on that sort of thing. And that is why it is so crucial that he has somebody at his elbow who is a micromanager with a very close eye for detail uh, who will point things out to him, which I don't think necessarily, you know, people are doing at the moment. Um, and thank you very much indeed for that. And you've got a great fan here, Anne. A tweet has just come in and smashes it again. Such a very sensible and clear thinking lady. Uh, that was from Peter and Stevenage. And thank you thank very you. much for your thoughts.